champion. Today I'm going to teach you how I would do sighting for an open water swim. So while I'm doing my sighting technique, which is incorporating the sighting into the breathing, I start off by just doing my normal stroke. Now I prefer breathing uh, to one side, to the left side. So when I'm sighting, I'd sight every six to seven strokes and it would do that by just looking up just so that you can see um, so my nose comes out of the water. I don't breathe in. I would only breathe in when I turn my head to the left. So I'd start swimming, look up just so I can see the buoy or the landmark or whatever it is that I'm looking for and then I would turn my head to the side to breathe. I think this is the easiest way of doing it and the most efficient in terms of energy usage uh, when you're sighting. I think um, it's something that's incredibly important uh, to try and practice and to try and master because of the two versions of sighting, this is by far the, uh, the easiest and the quickest way of doing it. So there is a second way of doing sighting if uh, you don't find the other way um, comfortable enough. I would call it a water polo stroke, which basically means um, it might be slightly more suited to you if, um, if it is a really choppy or really wavy event. What you don't want to do when you're swimming is to stop swimming to look up to see where you're going because it's going to take so much more energy to get back into the rhythm that you were swimming in. So this version is um, probably slightly easier if, uh, if it's really choppy or windy. So the way you go about it is to swim your normal stroke and you would look up for about five or six strokes just to make sure you're seeing the buoy and you're seeing where you're going. Another tip that I would use for doing an open water swim in terms of sighting is if it's possible to find a landmark in the distance in the region that you're trying to go. Sometimes the boys are the same colours as the hats for the race. If they're boys are orange, sometimes hats are orange and it can confuse you slightly. So I would recommend trying to find some sort of landmark in the distance that you can focus on and when you get closer to a buoy and you can distinguish it between the water and the hats and everybody that's around there, that's when you can really start to focus on swimming towards the buoy. It's not going to be a bad thing if you can't find a landmark and um, it'll just make your life slightly easier so that when you are sighting and looking up you have something to focus on and you're not spending too much time with your head out the water trying to find whatever it is that you're looking for. A tip for um, if you're sighting and you're not sure about which goggles to use on the day of the race, I always make sure I pack two sets of goggles in my swimming bag. No matter what the temperature is when I leave home, always pack two separate types of goggles in. If it's a cloudy day and it's overcast and you're pretty sure the sun isn't going to make appearance on that day, I would suggest that you race in goggles that aren't mirrored, ones that don't have a mirror effect on them, because you should be able to see um, where you're going slightly better. If it's slightly overcast and darker browner goggles or black goggles might make it a little bit dark for you, but having goggles that are clear or goggles that are not mirrored are the best thing if it's an overcast or if it's a slightly, um, a slightly mud muggy day. However, if the sun does make a rare appearance as it does in Britain, I would suggest that you always, always pack some mirrored goggles in your swimming bag. These goggles have saved my life I don't know how many occasions. They're basically just the same as sunglasses. When you're in the water, if the sun is shining and it's glaring on the poolside or on the water um, surface, mirrored goggles are going to be absolutely key to making sure that you can see where you're going and sighting um, is such an important part of the race. The last thing you're going to need is, uh, is clear goggles that are making the sun come in your eyes. So. The most important tip that I would give to you on race day is to make sure that you have two sets of goggles in your kit bag. 